Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God created mankind from dust and a rib. The woman was created from a rib of Adam, the man from the dust. Okay? And he was created in God's own image and in God's own likeness. Male and female created he them. And you know the argument for the conservative Christian and the, and the uh, evangelical Christian is he didn't create uh, uh, homosexuals. He didn't create pedophiles. He didn't create bisexuals. He created a man and a woman. Okay? And uh, it's true. And the Bible's a book of truth. And the Bible says when he created Adam and Eve, he said it was good, didn't he? Alright? And they were to multiply and, and increase the earth through sexual <clears throat> intercourse. And so we have a standard to go by. We don't have to believe public opinion. God didn't create us to be homosexuals, bisexuals, pedophiles, having sex with kids or any of that stuff. He created us to be attracted to the opposite sex. That's a natural thing. Alright? You're not an evil Christian if you know, the opposite sex... Wow. Well, uh, mm, yeah. You're only evil when you act out something that's wrong. So, he also, you got to understand, he didn't make the earth in five billion years and he didn't create, take 200 thousand years to create man. He did it instantly. And the Bible backs this up. Psalms 33 is one area. In Psalms 33, 6, God starts talking about the word of the Lord. <clears throat> By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. They were created. And he goes to talk about the waters and so forth. And then he says this statement. He spoke, God spoke, and it was what? Done. He spoke and it was done. Let there be light. One billion years later, there's light. No. Let there be light. Bam. What? Light. The next day, he said, let the waters be separated from above and below. And bam. What? The waters were separated. All right. Day three, he said, let the dry land appear and let the plants come out after this kind. Bam. You got you know, 300 foot sequoias, you got, I don't know, everything. Bam. Amen? Amen? See, that's the Bible. And they say that's faith. Well, their crazy theory is faith. That everything come from a microscopic invisible substance that blew up and all of this vastness was made out of a minute atomic substance? Come on. That takes a lot of faith. Hallelujah. Anyway, I just want to remind you of that. And it goes right along with Israel in Egypt. Psalms 105 verse 31. In Egypt, God spoke and there came swarms of flies. Did it take a million years or a billion years for the flies to come? No, he spoke, bam, flies. Isn't that right? Lice came. He spoke, the locusts came. He spoke and the rod turned into a snake. And those magicians and those sorcerers and all the wizards down there were never turning rods into snakes or lice or flies until Moses showed up and God allowed them to do several of them and then he stopped them. Where does the real power come from? God. Okay? And don't forget that. Just because somebody might do something that looks magical and powerful, if the message isn't right and the life isn't right, you can't follow it because God can use idiots. He can use evil people. And that's what he says in Deuteronomy. I will test you. See if you're going to follow a prophet or not. That leads you away from God. All right, with a sign. He said that. Everybody know that? Yeah. Signs is not an approval of the messenger. The message is. Hallelujah. When he said, let it be dark, not even a candle could produce light. 
It was totally dark. Okay? Nothing was seen. And the death of the firstborn. When he said it, the secondborn was not touched. Just the firstborn. Bam! Everybody, all these firstborns are dead. How many firstborns we got here? Yeah, see, you'd have been dead. The rest of us would have remained. Hallelujah. Amen. Boy, pay to be the second, third, fourth, fifth. Number five, I was really safe. <laughs> so, if God created us in his own image and in his own likeness, what is God like? What is his image? What is his example? His, his model? John 4.24 tells us that God is a spirit. See, a spirit does not have flesh and bone. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove on Christ. <clears throat> God is a spirit. God is not an idol. God is not a man-made idea. God is a person that is a spirit. Okay? So thusly, we are people that have a spirit. You see? Amen? Amen. We have a spirit. In John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld him as the only begotten Son of God filled with glory. The glory of the only begotten Son of God filled with grace and truth. Isn't that right? Yes. Jesus was God in the flesh. God in a physical body. So if God had a physical body and was a spirit, we have a physical body also. Here's the <clears throat> movie studio's rendition of Christ in his body walking on the water. Physical body. They touched him. He ate like everybody else. He went to the bathroom like everybody else. His clothes had to be washed like everybody else. He was in every way subject to everything we were subject to, but no sin. Amen. Now, that's why he was the perfect sacrifice. He came <clears throat> in the body of the flesh. So we have a physical body also and a spirit, okay? We're made in the image of God. But that's just the basic stuff. God is also good. So we can be good. God is also truth. So we can speak and live truth. God is also holy. Now how many of you know, no one cares how long Jesus' hair was. No one cares if he wore jewelry or not. Isn't that right? No one cared if he had short sleeves or long sleeves. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We don't care if he dyed his hair. Isn't that correct? We don't care if he put on makeup. What we care is he obeyed the Father. Jesus said, I do the will only of my Father. We only care that he was righteous in the things that he told us to be righteous in. We get distracted. We don't care if he had a beard or didn't have a beard. Has nothing to do with holiness, does it? The Bible never says you're holy if you got a beard. Or you're holy if you, you know, don't wear pants. The pants weren't even invented. Okay, we get off on these tangents. Has nothing to do with holiness. Are you getting the point? Yes. See, he spoke right. He lived right. He, he was good. That's what holiness is. Amen? Amen? Pure holiness is doing what God asked us to do. Don't add to it. Lord Jesus, we got enough to line up to without adding to the requirements. Isn't that correct? Right. Yeah. He was kind. I mean, you know, kindness goes a lot farther than anger and hatred. 
Kindness melts people. He was faithful. He was loyal. So we can be faithful and loyal. We are made in his image. Am I right? We don't have to be up and down in God or anything. We can be consistent too. And he was forgiving. We can forgive others. Somebody mistreated us. And there's a big thing in America right down about uh, the, the different cultures, the different races, the different social levels and, and all that. And, and there's anger in America right now. And what we need is a good move of God to bring a heart of forgiveness. What good does it do you to keep harboring grudges and resentment? We need to correct the problem, forgive the problem, and move on. Could that be an amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, then God is eternal. So guess what? We are eternal. Even if you're a bad creation, you choose the bad road, you're going to live for eternity. You're just going to live in the lake of fire, which is a time, uh, an eternal punishment. We, we are in the image of God, and that's God's image. That's his likeness. Can I hear an amen? Okay, it's not hard to understand at all. In Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship. He created us. Created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. People say no works. You find works all through the Bible. What they mean is you can't do a work to uh, buy yourself into eternity. But when you get saved, you're saved to what? Do good work. You don't lie. You don't cheat. You don't beat your spouse up. You know, that's good works. Amen? Amen? You read your Bible. It takes work. That's a good work. You pray. It takes work. That's a good work. Amen? Amen? This stuff about no work, they, they have it all distorted. Like we don't have to do anything. Which God before ordained that we should what? Walk in and we've got to put action behind our faith. Can I hear an Amen? Hallelujah. We're made in the image of God. What if God just sat up there and did nothing? What if he sat up there and didn't die on the cross? He created us and then he just said, okay, you're on your own. Like a lot of uh, people believe. You know, okay, we're on our own. No. He keeps working for our good through good works from him. Isn't that right? If we come to our senses and ask forgiveness, he what? Forgives. If we ask him for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he gives what? Everyone the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He's up there working for us. If we ask him for understanding, he gives us what? Understanding. He is working on our behalf. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. If he, we ask him to deliver us from something, a physical healing or spiritual healing or whatever, what? He works. What if he just sat up there and did nothing? We'd be in a bad shape, <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. So because God works, we what? Work. Did God work for seven days making the natural area? Yeah. Has he been, work has he been working for 6,000 years trying to straighten out the spiritual area? Uh, yeah. So we got to work. In Ecclesiastes 7.29... God made man upright. God made man good. God made man truthful. God made man faithful. God made man to be kind. God made man to forgive. But man sought out many inventions, evil schemes, evil ways. Well, if God is a God of love, why does this bad stuff happen? It's you, knucklehead. Hello, church. Now, he does make the halt and the lame and the blind. The Bible says that. So, are you inferior because you were born blind? No. You had nothing to do with that. Am I right? If you were born with a club foot, is that because, you know, he's punishing you? No. You had nothing to do with that. And that doesn't make you a second class citizen. Or a second-rated person, does it? That's his choice. He makes 
us the way he decides to make us. And we're going to live as long as he decides we're going to live. You have the promise of 70, 80 years, and I'm at 73, but you don't have the guarantee of tomorrow. You understand that? God may have you on his calendar. And you can speed up death. You know, you can shorten your stay here on earth by your choices. Uh, amen? <laughs> anyway, God made man upright. Don't let these people fool you. If God is a God of love and God of good, why is all these bad things happening? We sin. God has to correct mankind. He has to correct his church. He has to correct the unchurch. He has to bring correction. So he does it through wars and famines and sicknesses and acts of gods and different things. Amen? Amen. That's Bible. Why? Because he loves us. He, you know, he wants us to go to the right place, not the wrong place. And a good father will discipline his children. Isn't that correct? <clears throat> so we have covered the first creation. Now let's get into the second creation. All right? In John chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. That which is born of the water and of the spirit... If you're not born of the water and the spirit, you can't even see or enter the kingdom of God. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And Jesus says you must be what? Born again. You've got to be created again. This is a spiritual creation. That baby in the womb <clears throat> grows. It is created. It is fashioned. And everything it's going to be is there in the womb growing. Okay, and so we got a second creation that we need to go through and that's what we call it being born again. The Spirit actually comes, puts his hand on our life, convicts us and moves in us. But also 1 Peter 1.23 tells us we are born again by the word of God. So we need the Spirit and the word working together to create us spiritually. Can I hear an amen? Now if you don't get into Bible studies and you don't read your word and you don't study the word, how are you going to get created spiritually? Does that make sense? You see, we got to put work into it. We can't trust the preacher every Sunday to, and, and there's no way the preacher one day a week is going to give you enough food, the scriptures, to change you totally. That's right. You got to supplement. Amen. That's right. <laughs> you got to get before God with that Bible yourself. And I'll show you a little later how to be more specific with that. <clears throat> now, 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation, new creature. That's the spiritual. That's the second creation. All things are what? Passed away. Something is happening. All things are passed away and all things are become new, fresh. What are the old things? What are the new things? Ephesians 4.24 Put on the new man. Which after God, who are we in the likeness and image of? God. All right, put on the new man, which is after God. Created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, you notice here, true holiness. What God says is holy, not what man says is holy. You know, the Muslims go to Mecca and they parade around this cube, a black cube, you know, and they think they're, they're make it, doing a holy thing. That's not in the Bible. That doesn't make you holy. A pilgrimage doesn't make you holy. You zip in your lip when you want to curse that guy, person out, or yell at them. That's holiness. See, that's doing what God said to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Not cutting your hair or not wearing pants and all that. that. True holiness is 
just obeying what God said to do. And folks, the Ten Commandments has given us enough to work on. I, I don't think we need to put in ten more. That's right. All right? <laughs> Could that be true? No, the first ten are enough. <laughs> well, that's a good start anyway. I mean, uh, it's going to take a long time to master that one, isn't it? <clears throat> and... Uh, you notice the Bible puts in true holiness because God knew people would distort it. All right, like the Jews. They had a Sabbath day journey. If you're going to be a real spiritual holy Jew, you, you can only travel so far on the Sabbath day. Well, that's adding to the word, isn't it? That's right. See? And washing the pots and the pans and all that. Oh, if you're going to be holy, you've got to wash pots and pans. And Come on, tear it to... Washing pots and pans is only good hygiene. It has nothing to do with being spiritual. Does it? No. It's just simple hygiene. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the new created man is a change of behavior and a change of speech. Is that a good summation? The second creation, the spiritual man, is a man... That is disciplining his life to behave properly and speak properly. That's right. That simple. So, the new man is more important than faith. Faith, by the way, according to Hebrews 6, is a baby doctrine. Forgiveness. See, faith should bring you to treat other people right. Forgiveness should turn you around from your wrong. It should be the resulting and the source to turn you from wrong. God forgives you. You stop doing that. So see, the new creature, the new man, is more important because the result is there. And husbands and wives are going to be, and a family, your kids, are going to be blessed by the new creature, not the man of faith that never does anything about it. And that was good. Oh, I believe in Jesus. So what? You, know, you don't come home at night. You never help with the kids. You know, you know. Or the wife's home watching soap operas all day and the husband comes on. What have you been doing all day? Oh, these kids. It's rough raising kids. They watch ten soap operas all day long. <laughs> Put the kids out in the backyard or in the... Yeah. I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Going to heaven. You know, once you accept Christ, there's no other place to go. So you're going to heaven. Does that help your family? The new man helps your family. The new man makes a difference in how you deal and speak to other people. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit baptism. You shall be, receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The result of that power is to be a witness for Christ. Isn't that right? You shall be my witnesses. Okay, my proof, my evidence. So what's the proof? The new man that is living right. It's not the tongues. It's not the prophecy. It's not the healing. It's not the gifts. It's the fruit. <laughs> Are you out there? Oh, yeah. Yes, I grew up in Pentecost. And the emphasis was on the gifts. And it should have been on the fruit. Without the fruit, God can't trust you with the gifts. You know what it says? Not a novice? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And especially religion. You know, if you read your Bible right, Christianity is not a religion. A religion is a man-made thing. Christianity is a God-made thing. And when he's making new creatures that follow his word, it is not a religion. It is a reality of a relationship that shows we love God. Now that was good. Amen? 
So don't let them put Christianity into this religious bracket. Hallelujah. It's real. Christ is real. And he supernaturally works in us. He really does. And he knows how to work in each individual the way they can handle it. Alright? He's good at it. <laughs> I've watched him for 40 years. He really knows what he's doing. <laughs> Amen. So in Ephesians 4.22, put off. Is that a work? Are you working when you take your coat off? Yeah. Put off the old man. Now you have a responsibility. He comes, he convinces you, he teaches you, and convicts you, and you got to what? Put on the old man. Which is what? Corrupt. The old man is corrupt. You're doing bad things. You're not worthy of God. You're not worthy of eternal life. And so you put off these behavior things that is corrupt and evil. That's the old man. He comes and he works with his spirit and his word to get it done. But you have to put it off. Are you with me? You got to do something. You got to respond. That's what Jesus said. He that has a responsive heart, more will be given. Put on the new man. Now what's the new man? Which after God, look at that. After God, whose likeness and image are we after? God. See, he, the theme is carried through throughout the whole Bible. Which after God is created in righteousness. That is a spiritual work. Amen. He comes and fashions and forms us, convicts us, and keeps building righteousness in us. It takes some time. For this reason, put away lying. Now, what side is lying on? The new man or the old man? Lying is the old man. See, put away lying. You've got to make an effort to stop lying. <laughs> Ain't no tongue talking going to heal this. Ain't no prophecy going to do it. God's got to come and, and, and some Holy Ghost fit or whatever. God's got to come and do a work in you and convict you and you got to respond. I had to work on lying for months. I had scriptures about lying on my mirror. I've told you this before. On my car dashboard. I mean, I bombarded myself with scriptures. I bombarded heaven and prayer and finally, <sighs> God brought my tongue in control. Other things he just did when I got saved. He, uh, several things he just did. But some things I had to fight the fight of faith. I had to put these things off and it took work. Amen? Some other people had a problem with their temper. You know, they get mad and they shoot their mouth off and everything else. Jeez. You got to fight that thing. You got to win that battle. And God is there with his power to birth you and fashion you and create you. Amen. And it's not going to be you in the end. It's going to be him and just your responsive heart. Yes. Hallelujah. If you just respond, respond, like admit you got a problem. That's a big step. Admit. No. Just admit it. Good grief. That's called confessing your sin. And, uh, well, I wouldn't be this way if, if they weren't that way. That doesn't work with God, does it? Yeah, that's psychology. God's supernatural. He can make you, no matter what situation you're around, what your conditions are, He can create you into a spiritual person of righteousness. And that's the power of the cross. Is there any sin He can't cleanse? Is there any sin He can't forgive? Is there any sin he can't deliver, set you free from? No. The Bible says his blood cleanses how many sins? All sins. Delivers how many sins? All sins. Come on, let's let him do his work. Hallelujah. I'm always telling God, you're the one that made these great big promises. Come on. Perform, man. You're the one that bragged and talked. I need, I need it to happen in my life. Is that a, is that a logical prayer? Yeah. yeah. 
I need help. I can't talk about God being a helper. I need that dude coming down and helping me. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> Speak every man the truth. Is that on the new man or is that on the old man? The new man. See. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down in your anger. How many of you know Christians that have a real problem with anger? You guys are lying through your teeth. A lot of you do. <laughs> Man, you get riled up inside and you say things you shouldn't say and you attack. I'm on the end of it. You don't come with graciousness in your heart or anything. It's a <laughs> Man. And your spouse knows. That's right. You get mad at your spouse and oh, it's anger right at you. And, and when your spouse gets mad at you, if you ever did anything wrong, even five years ago, they bring it up. This is the way you were back then. And I, Gee. And then we come into the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm such a great Christian. We don't deal with these issues. And we don't even let God come to convict that We don't want to hear from him. We just want a song service. We don't want a worship service where the presence of God touches us, exposes us, and offers to change us. That's a worship service. Hallelujah. Anyway. Neither give place to the devil. The Bible says we know his devices. All right. He is out to entice you, seduce you. There's nothing wrong with smoking marijuana, man. I remember him coming to me when I was a young Christian, you know. You didn't really get saved. Nothing really happened. And when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, you just made a fool out of yourself. That was just gibberish that you talked. And, you know, you just, oh, just bomb, And then people help it out. They come and just sock it to you too. <laughs> oh, we'll see how long you're going to last. You know, all these people getting saved and they never last. We'll give you three months. Well, that's a real help to a new baby Christian. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I got three months and I'm going to fall away. Thank God I read the Bible and I, I don't have to fall away. <laughs> Amen. I read the Bible and God loves me in spite of my mistakes and he's, he's changing my mistakes and he's working with my sins and he loves me just like he loves the guy that's mature and walking in righteousness. I found that in the Bible and ah, hallelujah. Let him that stole still no more. That's common sense. But what we don't like to hear is the next part. Work. In the Ten Commandments, how many days does it say to work? Six. We're trying to get out of work every way we can. People don't want to work. God, in His Ten Commandments, said work. Amen? And people don't want to work. Well, you know, I was brought up in the neighborhood and my parents, blah, 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 you know, oh, you poor thing, we'll give you. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, you know, I thought I was in love with this guy and I got a baby and I can't support. Oh, no problem, we'll take care of you. And then she finds out she can get double the money she has another one. Oh, oh, I thought I was in love again and I got pregnant and the guy's allows. And, oh, oh, we'll give you more money. <laughs> and no work, welfare without work. It's not Bible. Are you with me? You see, this is called the new creation. God didn't just save you to go to heaven. He saved you to create you and bring you to a place where you were a light to the world. By your behavior and by your speech, people, the Bible says, will ask of you the hope that is within you. God is blessing your life when you obey God and so forth. <clears throat> then it says, that person should work that he may have to give to the needy. So it's not the government giving to the needy. 
It's people given to the needy. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, the government has no right to come and take your money and give it to who they want to. It is your responsibility to work and then share some of your money, alms, the Bible calls it, and don't let the right hand know what the left is doing. You give it without any uh, uh, show of it or anything else, and you help the needy. But I'll tell you again, in the New Testament, the church never gave anything to unbelievers. It's not recorded there. And in the Gospels, Jesus never gave anything to the poor. He didn't give them their, his coat, like he said. He didn't give them beans, except the Gospel. That's right. Well, he did multiply the loaves and the fishes a couple of times. <laughs> Are you out there? Why? He had his priority right. Did he tell us to remember the poor? Yes. yes, he did. But his priority was to come and what? Save the world from their sin. Christ came into the world to save sinners, not make the poor rich. He kept his goals. He kept his priorities. He loved the Father. He said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only heal people that he tells me to heal. I only speak to people he tells me to speak to. He only did the will of the Father. Wouldn't that be something if we could catch that? Amen. Yeah, he didn't go into the hospitals and cleanse the hospitals of sick people. Did he? No, he didn't. But when you get in over extreme faith, they, boy, oh, hallelujah, I'm going in. I'm going to, it's going to, everybody's going to be healed. Now. No need for hospitals. I've heard that and I've watched him make a fool of himself. You can only do what is his will to do. Isn't that what the Bible says? Right. According to his will. And if it's not in his will, listen, you're just putting on a big show. No corrupt communication from your mouth. That's the old man. The new man is communicate nothing but good, that which is edifying. Isn't that right? And then no bitterness. No resentment, no wrath, no vengeance, no anger. We already dealt with that. No clamor, the loud, persistent demand. You're not supplying the needs of this house, you worthless bum. Blankety, blank, blank, blank. You can hear them two blocks away. Woman, this house is always dirty. You don't do anything but lay around all day. The clothes on wall, you blankety blank. And then they come into the house of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amazing grace. How sweet. Oh, they sing with, with inspiration. But they don't let God deal with these things. And God is wanting to make you a new creature. Am I giving you the right message? Is this Bible? Why do we want to settle for babyhood when we can be a new creation by the power of God and His Word? The Holy Spirit is important. These people that fight about the Holy Spirit just drive me nuts. Well, no, baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't for today. It, that's not in the Bible. It doesn't say that. You made that up. And I know the scriptures you use to twist to do that. We need the power of the Holy Ghost working in our life. We need the conviction of the Holy Spirit working in our life. And we need the Holy Spirit backing up the Word which convicts us. And with the Holy Spirit convict, convicting us, that power can work on us and change us. But you've got to respond. You've got to respond. You can't sit there and duh. Is this thing over yet? You got to come to him. You got to seek him. You got to call on him. He asks us to call on him. He asks us to ask, didn't he? That's right. It takes work to ask. You got to move your mouth. <laughs> really tough, isn't it? It's tough on our pride. It's tough on our ego. We have this pride. That's right. We have these mental things in us. That, oh man! And you got to humble yourself. You don't call out. He has got no obligation to do anything for you. Evil speaking. 
That's just speaking harm, people. And malice is speaking that people would get hurt or doing things to hurt them. That's malice. And I see that in the church world. They don't like somebody, they treat them different. That's not the new creature, folks. And God wants us to be a new creature. And some Christians are 40 years old in God and they haven't moved one notch up from babyhood. Why? Because they're surrounded by baby teaching. Correct. Hebrews 6, read it. Right at the beginning. Baby food. First principles. Faith. Repentance. Water baptism is a baby doctrine. And people don't even want to get water baptized. They say you don't need it. Jesus got baptized. What, what, where's you guys' heads? Jesus is our example. Isn't that right? And we're born of water and the Spirit. You don't get baptized. You're not, being, you're not <coughs> obeying part of the born again formula. Amen? Amen? Born of water. Say water. water. Baptized in what? Water. Not corn syrup. <laughs> water. That's just religion. Here we are, the new man, the new creation. Be kind, tender hearted, forgiving one another. As what? Don't line yourself up to the deacon. Don't line yourself up to the worship leader. Who are you to line up with? Christ. Folks, it's so clear in the Bible. I made the mistake as a young Christian trying to, uh, you know, pick heroes and, you know, I, and they let me down. They let me down. And I found my, the hero that wouldn't let me down was Jesus himself. He's consistent. I can trust him and count on him tomorrow. As Christ did. Does he forgive? Is he kind? Is he sensitive to your problems? Yes. Tender-hearted? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Do we have some work to do in our life? Yes. Do we have some things we need to put off? Yes. Amen. Will he come and do the work? Yes. The operation on the inner man? Yeah, he's good. He's a good doctor, I tell you. He even has an anesthetic. His presence, man, you don't feel anything when the presence comes. You're just in love with him. <laughs> and then he's cutting out these tumors. He's cutting out these sins in your life. Amen? Amen? Exercising what one learns is more important than learning. And I told the church for years this. The, they always said, you're different. They'll say, you're different. You know, you're from another mold. No, no, I'm not. I'm just a person that decided to take God's word step by step and get it birthed in me. Yes. That's all. That's what made the difference. I read this book, I studied this book, and I sought God, and I wanted everything he had to offer. And I didn't make any excuse for it. And some things did not come for years. And when it came, I was shocked. And he says, well, that's for that time back there where you were fasting and praying and seeking me. This is the answer to that. I go, wow. That far back? <laughs> Are you with me? See, he gives us everything in his, time. in his time. But our job is to what? Seek him and respond to him when he comes. And he'll take, he knows how to examine you and deal with what you can handle today. I don't know how to do that. And I can give you the word, pop, 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 pop. But he knows how to come to you and know that today you can handle this area. Respond to him. And you and him together can conquer that area. Yes. You can conquer that anger. You can conquer that lust. He doesn't take the whole ball of wax. Little by little, line up on line, here a little, there a little. Isn't that the way he does it? 
kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. Amen? Babyhood, childhood, young adulthood in 1 John, and a father. You don't get to the father in a year in God. It takes time. He's got to mold you into a father. It takes time to become a young adult. See, people think they're doing really great. Reading Christian books and, you know, reading their Bible during the day. But they never come to a place where they exercise that work. They never come to a place where, man, boy, this is good. I got to get this in me. And you work on it. You work on it. And you work on it. See, keeping learning is not going to cause you to grow at all. You got to come to the place where you possess that learning, that truth. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Is Paul right? You can learn and learn and learn and not really experience anything in God. Wasn't the Pharisees like that? Yes. Could they quote the whole Pentateuch? Yeah, the scribes, they could quote the whole Pentateuch, yet they didn't know Christ when he came. They didn't know the scriptures. They could memorize them. They could speak them. They heard them, but they couldn't live them. They couldn't apply them. They didn't even want to. Yeah. 